Creating database applications with AI can be tricky sometimes, so let's look at how we can create administrative pages for a web app that has different user privilege levels. I'll also try to give you my best advice on how to tackle database problems. Before getting into the admin pages, we first need to set up basic login, sign up, and user details pages. Now that the pages are ready, let's sign up a new user. It looks like this is just a fake user, so we need to create a Firebase backend to handle authentication. Done. Let's head to the back end and see what we've got. There are email and anonymous authentication methods available. Let's remove the anonymous login. Disabling anything you're not using is always a good move for security. Now let's test the sign up again. It looks like the front end is working. Let's double check the back end to ensure the user was created there too. And there it is. Perfect. Now we can move on to the main topic, the admin page. Create an admin page that lists users and allows an admin to change user rights between a normal user and an admin user. That's done. Let's try logging in again. We're stuck on the loading icon. It doesn't proceed to the user page anymore. Let's sign up the user again. But first, we need to clear the old values from the database. The problem is probably that the new front end doesn't work with the old data in the database. After adding an admin page, the user values in the database should also include a field that tells whether a user is an admin or not. That missing field could be what's breaking the front end. Let's delete the old data and register the user again. Also, remember to delete the user in the authentication view. So now let's register again. Let's check the back end to see if it actually created the user. Yes, the user is there. But the loading icon is still spinning, so something's off. I'll try logging in, just to see if that works, because the user is already registered in the back end. No luck, sign in doesn't work anymore. Let's ask Gemini to fix it. Still broken. I'll also test the registration path. There are two paths to the user page, the sign up page and the login page. We need to check both because I've previously had an issue in one path and the AI only fixed the other. So the solution was to clearly state how I was trying to reach the user page. Registration is failing too. So let's ask Gemini to fix it again and be specific this time. After signing up, I click create account. Then after modifications, we need to clear the database again. When testing and fixing errors, you need to be resilient and always clear the values that might prevent you from seeing that the front end would work if the database was clean. It took a bit longer to log in this time, so maybe Firebase restarted some services. But in the end, the user page works fine. Here are a couple prompts that help with stubborn errors. First, instruct the AI that every database interaction must include data checking, and if the data comes back unexpected, undefined, or invalid, display an error on the web page or browser console. Another one is to add extensive logging in the browser console on what is happening. That way, you can open Chrome DevTools and see exactly what's happening step by step. All right, let's get back to the user page. Note that Gemini automatically added a field on the user page showing whether the user is normal or admin. If that field misses, ask Gemini to include it. You need it for testing and debugging. Now we need to add admin privileges to the user we just created. 
Otherwise, we can't test the admin page. So I'll say to Gemini, do not make any code changes right now, but give me instructions on how to make a user an admin in the database. The important part in this prompt is the do not make code changes part. Gemini was really eager to implement a button that does it, but that's not wise, because it would be used only once and then it would have to be removed. Also, it's good to know how to change user privileges manually in the Firebase console. So, the instructions are, open your Firebase project in the Firebase console, go to Firestore, find the user's document in the user's collection, and edit the role field to admin. Sounds simple enough, let's try it. One thing to note here, these instructions are specific to every app, so your rules can be very different based on how Gemini generated your database. Done. Let's check the user page, and there it is, showing that I'm an admin. This time, updating the database was really easy. In one of my earlier setups, the database was empty, and the instructions were to create a roles admin collection, add a document with the user's ID, and then include fields for email and role. I just wanted to show you so you'll see that it's not hard. Just be careful to type everything correctly and it'll work fine. Now it's time to test the admin page. It looks like it flashes the admin page and comes back to the user page. If you look at the page address, it is first admin and then gets redirected back to the dashboard page. That's not great for a few reasons. I checked the code and this line is what causes the redirect. It looks like it fails to recognize that the user is an admin or user data is loading, so it gets redirected back. In any case, this is also a security issue. A page cannot go to the admin page and after that check if the user has the correct privileges, it must be checked before going there. So, let's tell Gemini to check the privileges before going to the admin page. I think this error will disappear soon, but if you still see it, simply tell Gemini to remove the redirect and check permissions before navigating to the page. So, let's try again. And now, the admin page works. The most important test at this point is that you create a new user and then check that the new user with normal user privileges cannot enter the admin pages. I'll type slash admin directly in the browser we get an insufficient permissions error which is exactly what should happen. After this, you should check that all the functionalities work. I did it and the admin page works so I'll spare you the boring part. If you're curious about how the Firestore security rules look, let's take a quick peek. It's always good to review them since AI can sometimes make mistakes. There's an update rule that includes an isAdmin method plus a few other checks. It's smart to double check with the AI that normal users are blocked from updating roles. Here's the isAdmin method. It checks that the user is signed in, and in the Firestore database, the same user ID has admin in the user role field. So, let's ask the AI to clarify the rules. Do the rules really block requests with normal user privileges to change the user's role? Hackers tend to do this kind of stuff where they form requests with normal privileges to do admin stuff? The answer is, regular users can update their own data, but they are blocked from changing their role. Good. From a developer's point of view, this is enough, but you still need a security tester to confirm that normal users are blocked. Before wrapping up, just a quick reminder about security. SNCC is a great free static code security scanner and Cloudflare offers a solid free web application firewall. Check out my Cloudflare video to learn how to set that up. I'm not sponsored by them, I just want to stress that whether you're a Vibe coder or a No coder, if you skip basic security tools, you'll eventually get hacked. That wraps the tutorial. Let me know if you liked it and drop a comment. Happy coding!